Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the 31st Wednesday in Ordinary Time, and the Church today remembers St. Martin de Porres. St. Martin de Porres, also known as St. Martin de Porres Velasquez, was born in 1579 and died on this day in 1639 at the age of 59. He was born in uh, Lima, Peru, and he had a sister named Juana de Pérez, born two years later in 1581. And after the birth of his sister, his father abandoned his family. So his mom had to support her children by taking in laundry. And Martin himself ended up joining the Dominican order as a lay brother, which means that he wasn't ordained a priest. And he uh, took up tasks in the monastery and the religious community and at the age of 15 he asked for admi an official admission into the convent of the rosary in Lima and he was received first as a servant boy and then he moved up until eventually he was placed in the infirmary which is where he spent most of his ministry and he was known for d doing very very good work for those who were ill well he soon after that an epidemic struck Lima and in the single convent there were about 60 friars who were ill most of them novices and they were locked in a distant section of the convent kind of quarantined away from the professed brethren and miraculously he would be able to move in and out of the locked door in order to minister to those ill of the plague of the epidemic. And he didn't eat meat. He begged for alms in order to make sure that, firstly, the convent had enough for what they needed, not what they wanted, but they needed, and gave the rest to the poor, eventually serving 160 poor people every single day in Lima. And so... At his death at the age of 59, he was very well known among the people of Lima. And so today, for all his holy work that he did, working with the ill, he is also the patron of public health, among other things. So during this pandemic especially, we ask St. Martin de Porres to please, please pray for us and the whole world for an end to this pandemic and the evil that it has wrought. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, and omission, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the second form of the Confidior on page 66, if you're following along. I confess to Almighty God in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do one act of kindness sometime today, be it large or small. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You, O Lord, are near, and all your commandments are permanent. Of old I know from your decrees that you have established them forever. See how I love your precepts, O Lord. In your kindness give me life. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, send your Spirit upon us as we observe your commandments of love. May we experience your presence as we come before you in praise. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. He draws, he dawns through the darkness, a light for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Well for the man who is generous, gracious, and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. If you are insulted in the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the Spirit of God rests upon you. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion. Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down <coughs> and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing on him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he's still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our gospel today, Jesus puts it all on the table. He gives us the price tag of following him for reals. Okay. First he starts out, you can't approach him to be a disciple unless first 
you give up your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers and sisters, and your own life. Now, it doesn't mean you have to walk away even from your own life and all your relationships to follow Christ. But what it does mean is that you have to be willing to do so if it interferes with your following of Christ. And that is a very, very important element. Because Christ, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, is everything to you and to me, to everyone. And if we are going to call ourselves Christian, we have to be willing to give up all of those things. Now, hopefully, in a perfect situation, your wife, children, father, mother, brothers, sisters will come along for the ride. And they will be just as committed in a perfect situation. But unfortunately, the world and human beings being what they are, that is usually not the case. And the closer we follow Christ, the more we are going to find that we are giving up more and more in this world. We may have to give up father and mother. We may have to give up our spouse, children, even siblings, if they force us to make a choice between them and Christ. Now, before we embark on this journey of discipleship, Jesus wants us to look at how much we are willing to give up. That's why he says, if you're going to construct a tower, you first sit down, calculate the cost, or if there's a opposing force marching in, see if you have enough to defend yourself or you have to go to peace terms. That's an important one because that marching force is Satan and his minions and his demons. And they are coming marching against the righteous against the, those followers of Christ. And indeed, if we are not a true disciple of Christ who are willing to give up all those things that he enumerated, we have to make peace with the opposing force. But if we are truly committed, are willing to give up these things, father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even our own lives, then, yes, we have that strength to go into battle as in the church militant here on earth and fight Satan and fight the evil that tries to destroy Christ and his disciples. That's why he says, every one of you does not renounce all his possessions, and that includes close relationships, cannot be my disciple. Because Christ needs all fully committed disciples. Now, my brothers and sisters, before we move any further in our journey of discipleship, we need to do exactly what he says. Sit down, calculate the cost to see if we have enough to complete our journey to full discipleship. If we do, we need to be all in all in on following Christ and whatever he asks of us, even until death, my brothers and sisters. Death, either by mar red martyrdom or white martyrdom. What's the difference? Red martyrdom is when we are literally killed by an exterior force for our following of Christ and being his totally committed disciple. A white martyrdom. Our thousands and thousands of little deaths in our world where we would lose our father or mother, wife or children, brothers or sisters, everything up to our own lives. So, my brothers and sisters, I ask you today to look inside yourself. Are you willing to give up 
everything up to your own life to be a true disciple of Christ. Because if not, it's time to make a deal with the devil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We place all our hope in the Lord as we now turn to the Father with our prayers. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that she may always call her people to live in concrete ways, the great commandment of love and full discipleship. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may act with integrity and truthfulness, working together for the common good. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For, our, for all the youth preparing for sacraments this year, that they may grow in understanding and faithfulness to God's word, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with care and worry about what the future holds, that by seeking God above all things, they may know peace, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially those on our parish prayer list and their caregivers, that they may find strength and endurance in the love of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. And for all of those whose names we read yesterday, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and those who will die today, that they may live in the light and peace of God's presence forever, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, help us to still and quiet ourselves, confident in your unfailing mercy. And grant us the grace to be full disciples going all in for you. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I cling to your decrees, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. May it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord our God, accept these gifts of your bounty which we bring to you. By the power of your Holy Spirit, may these holy mysteries sanctify us in this life and lead us to eternal joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. <laughs> 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Out of love, you called us to life. You give us our daily bread and the bread of life, and by your protection and assistance, you see to our every need. So with trust, we commend our day to your fatherly care. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3. It's found on page 84, if you're following along. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. Through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, the prisoner's freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially those who have wandered away from Christ. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone, especially those names we read yesterday. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Martin de Porres and St. Winifred, whose memories we keep today, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past, we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, 
All honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours for now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Let's say together the First Communion Prayer on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament, in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Let your kindness come to me, O Lord, your salvation, according to your promise. So shall I have an answer for those who reproach me, for I trust in your words. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us the true bread from heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be so nourished that, abiding in him and he in us, we may be filled with the power of endless love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, 
cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's join me now in the prayer of St. Francis for peace in the world. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Where the divine master grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. Hopefully it went well. Facebook changed their interacting, interaction again, so I hope it went out. Um, hope and pray that you have a wonderful day. We will be back tomorrow at noon Central Daylight Time, and then on Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time. No, Central Standard Time, because we do change times. So Central Daylight Time tomorrow, Central Standard Time on Sunday. So again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and always, always, always remain in a state of grace. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation <coughs> by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died.